Okay, now let's talk about how do all of these things fit into a software defined world. That's a new acronym that you've heard today in terms of a software defined world as opposed to software defined networking or software defined storage. So let's come back to software defined networking. I think we can all agree that there are three key principles that are typically used in any SDN context. One is agility, number two is automation, and number three is in terms of uh, some kind of a controller that abstracts and separates the control plane from the data plane for orchestration purposes. I look at this as two different ways. Number one is how does visibility play a role in the context of an SDN environment, and that could be an open flow based SDN, could be a network virtualization you know, uh, methodology that's being used, or could simply be dynamic work workloads that are being enabled by SDN. And the second one is using the principles of SDN itself for visibility. For example, it could be for programmability and open APIs, um, any kind of centralized control, and as, uh, as well as uh, participating in the open source community. I'll talk about the first one, and I think this is especially true in the case of an open flow-ish SDN environment. Uh, the abstraction of the control plane from the data plane means that the intelligence now moves into an SDN controller, and the applications are now talking to the SDN controller. At least that's the, that's the goal, right? Now, the thing to note here is that the monitoring challenges or the visibility challenges with SDN in this world are quite different because you're now communicating precisely with the controller, right? But what happens if there's a flaw in the underlying you know, switch? Um, who actually knows uh, the state of that? So the contention here is that traffic-based visibility is actually going to become even more important than ever before when you move to a paradigm where the controller gets separated from the headless data plane because you don't exactly know where the actual problem is, right? So that's clearly a place where we can have immediate applicability by using traffic-based visibility as opposed to any kind of samples. And of course, there are also many other variances of that. What if this is a white label switch? We talked about NetFlow before. Uh, obviously, that white label switch would not be able to generate NetFlow packets. So you have a way in terms of having uh, reuse of your operational infrastructure, even though uh, you move to a fairly commodity infrastructure in the network. Now, the next one here is in terms of visibility for SDN environments. And I think there are two examples that I would give you here. One is for network virtualization, um, you know, filtering based on tenant and service overlays, uh, filtering based on, um, you know, on, on the physical underlay, and being able to correlate what is happening in the overlay with what is happening with the underlay, so that the monitoring challenge becomes far more simplified by doing this. Uh, this is a place where we've done a fair amount of integration with the VMware NSX environment. Um, this is by no means a solution that is restricted to VMware NSX because of the fact that Cisco ACI is new. We've not had the time to do that necessary level of integration with them. There's also aspects in terms of dynamic workloads that are enabled by SDN, which means that we need to have the ability to, imp to follow the VM policies. I think um, Peter talked about the detect, react, and respond in terms of how we uh, sense a v-motion happening from one host to another and then automatically migrate the, the, uh, the, the vm policies. And there's a deep integration with, with STM controllers for this. Obviously, there's also an aspect of OpenStack, which Sesh will talk about later on. So we know the challenges in terms of multi-tenant networks in a network virtualized environment. And what is interesting is that a lot of our customers have come to us who are joint customers of both in this particular case, VMware and Gigamon, and said, I've got a fairly extensive set of tools that I'm using from a physical infrastructure. I want to have exactly the same level of visibility as what I have from a physical network in my virtual network as well. And you could do that here with uh, the, the, the solution that we have. The way this works is the fabric manager that Noam uh, demonstrated talks both to the VM, which sits on, um, on, on, the, on the host, as well as with the physical fabric, the underlay on which it's being transported, the correlation is done within the visibility fabric before the traffic is sent to the tools and analytics. And the components of this solution are, uh, so, so the way in terms of how you deliver traffic to the tools, uh, that is highly configurable. You can filter out um, the VM traffic, strip off the VXLAN headers, for example, and deliver it to the tool if the tool is not uh, sensitized to, to VXLAN. Uh, other example could be you can specify a specific um, you know, tenant ID and look only for traffic based on that. And these are the kinds of things you could do when you've got the ability to do you know, deep packet inspection and extract traffic uh, specific to only specific tenants. 
So you can also see that uh, there is uh, the troubleshooting that can be enabled at the, at the virtual network or tenant level. Is there any more integration with NSX than there was with vCenter already? Yeah, so uh, there is the integration with NSX APIs as well as with NetX that's uh, this currently in the works. So, you know, what's that workflow? You know, you know, I get it, you know, the overlay for this, so then do you, you know, dynamically provision a VM where the source IP, the source VM is, desk VM is, and then just send the particular flow to the actual physical Gigamon appliance? Do you want to let, me, let me try answering that. So the, the discussions of VMware that we were having is when they create a tenant with a specific VNI, they could invoke us to ask for a specific filter on that VNI. Or when a new VM is added, they could automatically add the VMs for the monitoring part. So right now it's, it's manual, but the, the, the discussion that we're having with VMware is to automate that sequence. Or we pull and get the information from the NSX controller, and then we build that whole uh, filtering, if you will. Okay. There's a demo of this that Sesh will be doing later on, so I'm going to skip over this since he'll be covering this. Um, the, the last part that I want to cover is um, using the SDN principles for visibility, right? Um, so there's a lot of good principles and methodologies that could be used uh, in visibility itself by kind of borrowing some of the principles from, uh, from SDN. And I would say there are key, three key things here. Number one is the programmability and open APIs. So we have a prototype right now for the a APIs uh, that can be used for the fabric manager to talk to any external uh, systems. Typically, those external systems would be the tools that connect to the visibility fabric. So for example, you want to get, um, you want to make a change, for example, change the, the flow map so that uh, there's a different kind of data that could be delivered to the tools based on certain conditions that have been detected by, by the tool. Um, the fact that it is exposed via the fabric manager means that it is a single point of control via the fabric manager for the entire visibility fabric. Number two is a centralized control for physical and virtual visibility. Very, very important because you're not getting a siloed view of just one part of the infrastructure. You're actually getting a very holistic view of physical plus virtual. And that can be used for centralized policy enforcement. And last but not the least, it's open source contributions. So we're driving a project along with um, many other vendors in the industry of what is called as a tap as a service blueprint within OpenStack. And the intention here is that rather than us going and doing some custom hack within an open vSwitch, which would only work in our environment, um, we want to have a, an open methodology so that once it is built into OpenStack, even if the customer changes a vSwitch, that's OK. Um, you know, as long as it, as it provides a tap as a service, it will be agnostic to the actual vSwitch itself. So that's something that's currently not in um, a distribution of OpenStack, but we're working with the community uh, to see that uh, some uh, we, we focus on higher value functions while the basic you know, infrastructure hooks are part of OpenStack. So if you were to lay this all out in terms of what does this mean from the point of view of a stack, we all know what the, the software-defined monitoring stack looks like. Um, in the data plane, um, the focus is mainly on you know, moving packets, right? Uh, you have the logical uh, network or the virtual network which focuses on a certain layer of encapsulation so that the physical location no longer, no longer matters. The control plane that abstracts from the underlying data plane and the applications that, that are on top of that. Something very similar would happen in the case of a visibility um, fabric, which is you have the fabric nodes that could be physical or virtual. Virtual you know, would be the VM, and the physical nodes would be the various in the orange boxes that you saw. The services layer that abstracts from the underlying physical network, so it removes all the encapsulations, normalizes things before sending it over to the recipients of the information. Um, the fabric manager is a single pane of glass. Now, we don't, we don't have any aspirations to be a controller vendor, right? So we'll go integrate with any other controller that's out there that's getting momentum in the market. Uh, for example, if it's open daylight, if it is ACI, APIC, if it is you know, NSX, doesn't matter, right? So we'll go work with them. And that's going to be done using these open REST-based APIs that are exposed through the Fabric Manager. And then the applications that sit on top of it allow you to have advanced processing. So this is kind of what we call a software-defined monitor, <coughs> which complements the SDN stack in a very congruent way. And the idea here is to have a much more agile framework that encompasses the um, um, the, the best principles of SDN. And the good news here is that almost all these components are already available today.